Hello, my name is Doug Eaton. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Benton County uh, Historic Resource Commission, and I'm here today to talk about the historic neighborhood of South Central Park. And we're going to begin by looking at uh, an old home on the corner of 8th and Madison, and uh, this is on the uh, northwest corner, uh, across the street from Central Park, where we used to, um, long time ago, had this, a grammar school and a high school, uh, where uh, 7th Street punched right through the middle to uh, Monroe. But today, we have a lovely uh, Central Park and, uh, and, and art uh, center and plaza. So uh, we'll try to end our tour at the Art Center building. So <clears throat> the first house we're going to talk to, we have to negotiate around the tree here. It's here. Um, this house is the Jeffrey Porter House. <clears throat> the Jeffrey Porter House was built in 1889 by Samuel and Rose Jeffries as an, and is a classic example of the Italian style. Um, the rectangular um, plan is very typical of this design and it rests on a stone foundation. You can see behind the foliage there, and it's one of the few houses here in, in the neighborhood that's on original stone foundation. Um, in the rear of the house, uh, we'll take a look at an added garage that came uh, was added much later. Um, the porches on the east and south sides uh, of the house have nice detailing with posts and uh, and also typical of an Italianate style are the long double double hung windows that you can see on both stories uh, and also reflected in a long. Uh, window in the door with two side lights on each side. Very typical of this design. The roof is very low pitched. It's called a low hip roof and uh, so you can't even really see uh, the top of the house. And, uh, to me, Italianate houses always reminiscent of uh, Victorian era and uh, uh, make perfect haunted houses, at least in my mind. Um, I just love the uh, uh, the just the character of them. Uh, harkens back to uh, the Victoria era, so it's one of the older homes in the neighborhood. And next door is the Presbyterian Church, and uh, that's on actually on another tour on the North Central Park tour, and uh, we can uh, uh, hopefully get this recorded one day as well. Uh, with the great tour in itself. Um, so let's move on and take a look at the back of the house. It's always nice to know who uh, lived in the house, who had it built. And so on this tour, we're going to talk about some of the uh, people that are responsible for building these homes. Uh, Samuel Jeffries um, was a lawyer and Benton County representative to the Oregon legislature. In 1898, the property was imparted to Florence and Johnson Porter. Now, Johnson Porter was born in 1859, right here in Corvallis just as Oregon joined the Union as the 33rd state. In 1889, he started and managed the first electric light uh, plant in Corvallis, and he served as police judge of Corvallis in the 1890s, and later served as our mayor. Johnson's Fred, uh, son Fred and his wife Ida lived in the house after 1913, when Johnson and his wife moved to apartments above the Majestic Theater. Uh, Fred Porter was Corvallis' city engineer for 40 years. So there's a lot of history of uh, uh, 
downtown uh, leaders that uh, pass through this hall. In fact, this neighborhood was really where all the downtown uh, uh, workers made their homes and uh, raised their families. You can take a peek at the original garage, the garage that was added uh, probably a, a couple of decades later than 1889 when the automobile came around. They, uh, it was very common back then to uh, put your car under the house in sort of a, um, you know, a basement garage. Of course, cars were a lot narrower then. And uh, today, um, it's just one of those uh, uh, fun anomalies that you don't see very often anymore. So there you have it. I've never been down there before myself, but um, today the church uses it as offices and uh, as a youth center. Okay. Okay, here we are at the second house on our tour. We're at the corner of 9th and Madison. Uh, next to uh, the uh, gateway walk here that was uh, built just in the last uh, several years and a nice addition to the neighborhood and um, takes uh, pedestrians uh, from 9th and Madison into lower campus. Uh, it's interesting that back in the day there was a railroad track that came down 9th Street here and people would come down to OSU games and get off the train right here where we're standing and walk in through the historic gates that used to sit here that have now been moved down to 11th Street. Um, so um, a lot of history here on this corner. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Floyd and Zeta Johnson Vogue House. Now, in 1913, this house um, was built and it's architecturally uh, significant as a very intact example of early 20th century American four square style. You can see it looks a lot different uh, than the last house. We don't have the long double hung windows. We have a roof that we can see uh, with a dormer at the top. So, uh, and a long full porch along the front, which is very typical of this style, a four square style. The house rests on a foundation of miracle hollow blocks. Now, this is interesting. Um, if you can see behind the uh, foliage here in front, you can see individual blocks. Uh, they were called Miller, Miller, Miracle Hollow Blocks. We see them around town. Um, the, the Benton County Courthouse has um, some of the blocks in their design. Um, the blocks are rock faced with smooth margins. And uh, maybe we can get a close up as we walk up a little closer. The one story porch extends the length of the main facade and features square posts uh, on each end and one in the center hidden by the uh, hysteria there. Uh, two mental, metal lanterns, probably original to the house, flank the front door. So let's walk up a little closer so you can see them. Well, you can see the uh, lanterns there on each side of the, uh, the porch. Uh, the glass in the door and the two side lights next to the door are beveled. Um, so a lot of thought and some money went into uh, building this, this home. Uh, the most common window treatments are transom over sash windows. And for that, Some of the transoms feature leaded glass. I think we'll, uh, you can kind of see it there in the reflection uh, of that front window there. Right. Uh, the central hip roof dormer nicely completes the main facade. The sidewalk leading to the main porch here has the initial FDD, Floyd uh, Bogue. I don't know what his middle name was. Um, but that's kind of unique. I haven't seen that on any other other homes here in the area. Um, and so, um, F. E. Bogue um, was the son of William Bogue, and um, 
and he previously had a house in this location and had it moved to the lot south of the current house. Uh, uh, Floyd's father previously had a house in this location and had it moved to the lot south of the current house prior to his uh, construction. Uh, so the William Bogue house is no longer standing, but uh, we're lucky to have Floyd's house here. Uh, Floyd was a cashier at the Benton County State Bank and was a member of the Corvallis City Council. Uh, records show that Zeta died in the 1918 flu epidemic, which is kind of timely to what we're passing through now. And uh, we're going to hand our videographer a picture of the railroad um, train that came down Ninth Street, stopped here, and I want to point to the house we've just been talking about here. And up in the window there, I don't know if you can see, um, was the daughter um, uh, that, uh, or the wife, excuse me, uh, Zeta Bogue died in the 1918 flu epidemic. So we're lucky to have that historic photo in our records at the Benton County Museum. All right, we're ready to move on. Our next house is at the corner of 9th and Jefferson. And this is the John Foster House. The John Foster House is an excellent example of a two-story wood frame bungalow style built in 1912. Uh, we'll see some other bungalows on our tour. Uh, this is a two-story building situated to the northeast of the house is one of the only intact barns uh, circa 1890 uh, that's left in the area that used to sit here before the house was built. And we'll, we'll show you that in just a little bit. Uh, the typical bungalow um, that uh, ushered in in the uh, early 1900s was a break from the busyness of the Victorian era. Uh, bungalows typically hug the earth. Uh, they uh, use, um, sometimes use uh, different styles of siding. As we can see here, we have shakes on the uh, front porch uh, uh, facade and, and on the second uh, story dormer. And yet on the rest of the house, uh, we also we have uh, vertical lapboard siding, so that's often common. Um, bungalow porches are accented uh, with uh, often with uh, beautiful front doors. This one is somewhat hidden by the screen, but you can see the uh, lovely design uh, of the original front door on this bungalow. Uh, bungalows also have a mix of different window treatments, often multi-panes, uh, sometimes over a larger pane window. Uh, and so, what else can I tell you? Uh, this house is now a rental. Uh, and I need to put a bit here. Uh, upgrades, uh, especially the porch area here is showing some wear and tear, but it's still relatively intact. Um, inside, uh, some notable features are the brown and white floor tiles in front of the fireplace and the fur floors that were very common in the early part of the uh, 20th century. Uh, John Wesley Foster is a widely known uh, Benton County citizen. He was born in 1858 and his father, John Foster Sr., crossed the plains with ox teams and his family in 1845 to settle uh, just eight miles south of the present Corvallis. John Jr. started his own claim and specialized in breeding and raising Durham cattle. He married Laura C. Alexander, raised two daughters, and moved his family into town by 1911. And then the house was built for his family. Uh, the daughter, Ada Foster, lived in the house almost continuously from 1920 till her death in 1983. So let's uh, show you a couple other features on the east side of the house. The first here 
is what's known as a port cocher, uh, which is a uh, covered porch um, uh, or a coach, a, cover, a covered coach uh, access for cars, uh, the early cars of the uh, uh, early part of last century. So it's a nice, it's a, a fancy carport <laughs> where you could unload your groceries uh, out of the rain and walk right into the kitchen door. Uh, this was the old barn and uh, about 10 years ago the owner of the house uh, remodeled the barn took off the old barn doors uh, and made an, an apartment out of it so um, uh, so that uh, increased the value of the property um, so that's one of the uh, few remaining barns in downtown Corvallis uh, that you have to know about it <laughs> today it looks like just an extra little uh, accessory unit. So that's the John Foster house. Okay, now we're standing at the corner of 9th and Washington. Uh, this is the James A. Wood grocery store. The only grocery store, historic grocery store that we have in the neighborhood. Uh, it was a general merchandise store and is a significant example of intact 1890s Italianate style. You can see it looks like the first house we looked at by Central Park, a long double hut in the a roof um, that you can't even see, and uh, has a wraparound porch, which is uh, really nice and allowed customers to. Uh, 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 well, actually, you know what? The porch was added a little bit later, and that bay window in front right here. Uh, used to be uh, the front of the house, and, the, and it was, the house was set up a little closer to the sidewalk, so people could walk down the sidewalk and look at all the goods, uh, canned goods, whatever uh, things they would put into the uh, window there. Today it's an apartment house, uh, so let's just talk about the uh, style here. It's the only wood frame. Um, uh, grocery store, as I said, remaining in the city before the turn of the century. The store was probably located to attract the Glamet Valley and Post Railroad passengers. As you recall, the train tracks came down 9th Street at this point, and, uh, and it also served the, cat, the college students at that time uh, on campus. Uh, it was built in about 1892, and Ground floor bay front window, as I mentioned, was used for a display of goods and clothing. The building was set back on the lot in 1897 and came to the western end of the lot. The hip roof has box eaves with wooden brackets, mostly in a ring style. difficult to see today. Uh, it was recently painted so you can't see the open cut design on the back of the back of the Sometime before 1912, Samuel converted the store building to his own home. At this time, new wraparound doors were added along the front and south side. One story came on the east side, and it is original, and now one of two apartments in the building. Samuel Wood was a noted merchant and minister whose family lived in the house for about 40 years. And interestingly, on one of the tours, uh, we had a, uh, uh, a fellow that told us that he uh, lived in the apartments just to the north. And those were the original chicken coops uh, that we were going to part. Thank you.
念的寂静。Standing at the corner of 7th and Adams and uh, having a look at the Charles and Ibby Whiteside House. This is an aeroplane bungalow, the only one of its kind in Corvallis. It was built in 1922 for Char Charlie's wife, Ibby. The house exhibits strong Japanese influence uh, with some Swiss elements. Um, I think if we walk down this way. See a little bit better with the uh, or kind of the uh, Asian scroll work there um, on the e below the eaves of the first um, deck there. Um, what can I say here? <laughs> bungalow features. It's a it's an aeroplane bungalow, um, and if you look up to the top story there, which is known. Uh, as the cockpit because um, airplanes had uh, of the early 20th century were uh, the biplanes and uh, it has the swooping raptor tails that swoop up like an airplane. Uh, you might be able to see the, uh, the front uh, window box hanging below the, the three windows uh, that uh, might reflect the Swiss sort of influence and uh, the stonework as well. Uh, these rocks came from uh, a local North San Diego River in a restoration that was done in the late 90s. And uh, let's see. Well, it's uh, it was uh, it's so unique that the owner uh, decided to do the research on it in uh, the early aughts and got it listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, Charles Whiteside was the youngest brother of five <clears throat> brothers of the Whiteside family. His two older brothers uh, <clears throat> had the Majestic Theater and the Whiteside Theater built in the early part of the last century. Uh, Charlie Whiteside himself uh, opened up the Midway Drive-In that used to sit out uh, on Highway 20 at Granger Road there. And, uh, and he... Uh, managed that and then he managed the uh, Whiteside Theater as well in the uh, uh, 1950s. Um, interior features include um, uh, a window box uh, that uh, sits next to the fireplace uh, that lifts up and uh, firewood can be brought up from the basement uh, with a crank um, <coughs> me mechanism. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's walk around this side of the house. <coughs> there are a lot of um, no, there are a lot of this style of homes in the uh, Pasadena area of California. And they were built as summer homes for people back east that would come out to LA um, for the holidays. And uh, uh, this, this style of house really uh, takes a beating with the Northwest rains. And so uh, there's a lot of upkeep and maintenance involved, but uh, we're very lucky, lucky to have one in Corvallis. Um, so, get a little. There are two French doors that open out into the porch here that face south. So there's lovely lighting in the home. And uh, all the foliage you see on the berm here that leads up to the porch um, is also typical of a bungalow. Um, as I told you, they hug the earth and uh, incorporate a lot of uh, nature surrounding their home. Right. 
we're standing now at the corner of 8th and Jefferson, and we're taking a look first at the back of the John A. Bexel House. This is the 1908 uh, very intact uh, Craftsman Bungalow. Uh, craftsman Bungalows differ from the Airplane Bungalow, not only in exterior features, but also interior features. Uh, craftsman Bungalows have a lot of craft, uh, Craftsman work inside with uh, box beam ceilings and uh, uh, col uh, truncated columns that separate uh, rooms and uh, they're very dark and cozy uh, in feel, and uh, we're very lucky to have this intact uh, Craftsman bungalow in the neighborhood. I wanted to say something about the uh, back of the house before we go to the front. Um, hanging um, on the second story there, perched there, was the original sleeping porch. I think today the owners use it as a um, sewing room, crafts room kind of thing. But back in the early part of the century, earlier on the tour, I mentioned the, the uh, 1918 flu epidemic. Um, it was thought that um, after it was thought that uh, <clears throat> that by having screen porches was uh, would chase away and uh, prevent the uh, the viruses um, uh, entering the home, and it, <laughs> and it was a healthy way to live. Uh, they also were wrestling. The tuberculosis at that time. So open porches were very popular in the early part of the 1900s. Um, let's walk down past the uh, back door here to the kitchen. It's a lovely uh, back door that's original and has been uh, restored. Uh, the mission lights that hanging on the house probably not, might not be um, original. I'll have to ask the owner. But, uh, they, uh, they really complement the entrance. There is no vertical, excuse me, there's no horizontal uh, latboard siding. It's all shaped. And uh, this, uh, this hanging bay window is the dining room inside. And all the windows in that section of the house are casements. It's an open outward. Uh, the rest of the house, windows of the house are double up. There you can see the front facade. Um, built by Corvallis's best known builder from this time period, Charles Heckert, the house is intact and has had few owners. The one and a half story wood frame home has a rectangular plan with two intersecting gable roofs. Um, I mentioned the shingles that, um, that are uh, clad throughout the uh, exterior facade with decorative knee braces under the wide roof beams there, or the wide eaves, the wide roof eaves, okay, that uh, support the roof. Um, the exterior door uh, in the front is again kind of hard to see because of the screen door on it. That is also beautiful. I it could be original. Uh, the only alteration that I can see on this house are the two large picture windows. Um, those would have been uh, more multi-paned, like the rest of the windows on the house. But it was very popular in the 1950s to um, install uh, picture windows. So. Um, that's really the only alteration I can see. Um, what else? Can Original interior floor plans, as I get in the home, uh, are quite intact. As I mentioned, a lot of built-in wood details, bookcases, window seats, and um, original kitchen cabinetry that was recently restored in the last 15 years. Uh, the home was built for John Bexel, born in Bexit, Sweden, in 1890, uh, 1867. His family immigrated to uh, Iowa in 1881. Bexel was the Dean of Commercial Department at o OAC from 1908 uh, to 1931, when Oregon State was known as Oregon, was called Oregon Agricultural College. 
He was a distinguished educator and author and responsible for the remarkable growth of the uh, School of Commerce. So Bexel Hall is in the heart of Oregon State campus. All right. Actually, this was their first home, the Bexels, and then they built a home up in College Hill West, which is a lovely home as well, but it is more in the style of uh, English Tudor. Okay, that's another tour. <laughs> All right, this is the Buxton Quarry House, Buxton slash Quarry. Oftentimes, uh, the original owners that build a house uh, in town, uh, they get their name on the house because they were the ones that had it built. Um, but they may have only lived in the house for a year or two and then sold it to someone else. And that's what happens um, often. So this is a 1904 home, an excellent early example of vernacular colonial revival style. And uh, colonial uh, homes uh, are most, uh, we think of the East Coast, Northeast in particular. Uh, they became very popular of the century, the last century. The front porch roof is supported by six classical truncated wood posts, uh, and the interior craftsman uh, uh, features uh, a varnished oak uh, and detailing uh, with a baluster staircase inside and a fireplace that's flanked by built-in settee and a wood box, and a pantry between the kitchen and dining room. China cabinet, four beds, and counters. So, a lot of original material inside. Um, it's got a closed stairway uh, that leads from the kitchen to the second floor maid's room. Um, in 1889, <clears throat> Edward Buxton became a partner in the Central Planing Group Mills and Box Factory, the largest and best known manufacturing establishment in Benton County. Buxton and Charles Heckard built the house for Buxton, who lived in it for just one year. The house is more associated with the John Corey family, owners for 72 years. Corey was born in Illinois uh, in 1865 and moved to Corvallis to escape the extreme weather in Bozeman, Montana, where he had a beef ranch. And what he did was he bought a Lynn County farm and devoted his life to farming. His daughter, Eva, uh, Eva lived in the home until 1983. So um, let's walk down the block here. You can see the uh, front porch. Uh, there was an addition added on to the house sometime in the early part of, last, uh, of the last century. And uh, we can see that if we walk a little bit further. A lovely home inside. And uh, you're looking at a magnolia tree here. And then one of, I believe, five Camperdown Elms. Camperdown Elms are unique in the town. And I just love walking, especially this time of year, underneath the foliage here, uh, the branches, because you feel like you're in a different world. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, one of the most beautiful, interesting trees in Corvallis. So you owe yourself to walk down here. And in fact, um, walking by these homes uh, and taking a little more time to look at them uh, is a really good way to go. Uh, you can get the uh, uh, 10 different walking tour brochures down at Visit Corvallis, which is in the same building as the Chamber of Commerce on 2nd and Harrison Street, just as you're coming into town over the bridge. Just hang a right, and it's right there in a colonial brick building. So, this is a Camperdown Elm.
Okay. Our last uh, building on our tour is not a home. It uh, is the Episcopal Church of the Good Samaritan, today known as Art, the Art Center. Uh, it was built in 1889, and it's a wonderful example of 19th century Gothic revival style. You can always tell a Gothic uh, style home or church um, by the arched, pointed arched uh, entries you see in the front and the windows that wrap around the south and, uh, or excuse me, the west and the north, uh, west and east side. Ah, you can come. Um, it was built by Lawrence Holford and Allen in 1889 and originally was located at the southeast corner of 17th Jefferson. The building has a, a cruciform shape, or the shape of a cross. And let's walk on to the, uh, this side. They're, they're putting a new roof on today. And I think you'll be able to see the overall cruciform shape. Okay, so on, each, on the west and east side, uh, the church cuts out and uh, forms uh, the cruciform shape. Um, there were some alterations uh, in the 1930s. Put a, uh, the back of the church was added, and uh, the windows there reflect the original of the church. Uh, that was a chapel uh, that they had in the very rear of the church. Uh, after moving to a new church on Harrison, the old church was secularized in August of uh, 1961 and moved to this present site. <clears throat> the present sanctuary floor and interior wall surfaces were altered when they made the move and made it into an art center, but the original heavy timber trusses and other original features exist inside, so it's worth having a look. Um, it has a lovely gift shop in the front and then um, an art uh, museum in the back. Uh, the art center uh, sits at 7th and uh, Madison and uh, 7th Street used to punch right through uh, Central Park back in the late 1800s. And by 1912, according to the Sanborn fire maps, uh, it was uh, removed. And uh, Grammar School, Corvallis Grammar School, was on the west side of the park. And the high school was on the east side. Uh, they are no longer there. And today we have a lovely park. Um, and they just added a new playground area that hasn't been um, inaugurated yet, but will soon, I believe. So that's a nice addition to the uh, downtown. So, um, on behalf of the Denton County Commission, and uh, Corvallis City Historic Resource Commission and uh, Preservation Works. I would like to uh, thank you for listening and hopefully we can get more of these tours up online and, um, and hopefully sooner or later we can actually have real live tours again. I miss them. They're a lot more interactive and uh, a lot more fun. But I'm glad to have done this and I hope it works out. All right. Thanks.